This is the OTP pregame presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it's game day for your health coverage, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans to draw up the winning play. They've been backing Tennesseans for nearly 80 years. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is Titans senior writer, editor, Jim Wyatt of TennesseeTitans.com, at J. Wyatt Sports on like every social platform now. Are you on every social platform? I'm not on TikTok. Yeah, I haven't made the leap there. On Instagram, on Twitter, X. I use Facebook still to post stories, but I'm not on TikTok. I'm on Snapchat, but just uh, to my wife, my daughter, and my son. I've got like a 2,300-day streak going with my daughter, which Whoa. is pretty impressive. I ought to send her a snap maybe from in here. but um, You should. You should. But, uh, <laughs> we want to be a part we're of it. Can you okay, do it? Okay, let's do How it here. How long does so, it take? It, that's one every day, so I've done it for 2,300 days in a row. Uh, I've sent her a snap. So so you take a picture. You just take a picture? I'll take a picture of all us in here. And then I'll just <laughs> send that to her, and then all she'll right. send me what she's doing during the course of her day. It's just uh, I talk to her as well. I just don't snap. But apparently young people, they don't I ask her, well, have you talked to so-and-so? No, I haven't talked to them. I snap her every day. So yeah. I guess young people just communicate by snapping. You Nobody just, talks on the phone. Yeah. No. Except, the streak is except real. Except my mother. Yes. Oh, yeah. She will talk on the yes. phone for quite a while. Yes. Well, that's yeah. nice, too. Mm-hmm. It don't, is. Don't answer my phone. Like, my phone, you know, my phone rings, you know, 15 times a day from telemarketers and uh, <laughs> spam calls. My dad, I try to help my dad on different things. And sometimes I'll tell him, Dad, if somebody's got a question for you, just tell them to call me. You know, don't don't deal with these people anymore. They're trying to sell them stuff over the phone. So yeah. he apparently gave somebody with Medicare my phone number. And I get about 15 calls from Medicare, and people want to know if I <laughs> uh, need any kind of uh, devices. Um, as I get older, they think I'm him. So I get all his Medicare calls, about 15 a day. Oh, nice. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your parents just keep on giving <laughs> all the way through. All right. So this is OTP pregame. Jim Wyatt is sitting in the Snickers hot seat, which he likes because he's a huge Snickers fan. True. Do like Snickers. Yes. So we have five topics that we're going to bring up okay. for you, and uh, you're not prepared for these five topics, obviously. Just about candy? He's Jim Wyatt. He's always yeah. prepared. He's always prepared. I so, ask if I needed my Packers depth chart when nope. I came in here. <laughs> no, you so. don't. I mean, we're going to hit some Packers <laughs> stuff, but I think you'll be okay. Uh, topic one on the OTP pregame. What do you remember about Thursday, November 17th, 2022, when the Titans won at Green Bay on Thursday night football? Oh, man. Uh, you remember the final score? Hmm. What was the final score of that game? I uh, don't remember the final score. I remember my niece was at the game. Okay. Um, didn't get to didn't get to see her. Uh, what was the final score of that 27, game? 27-17, Titans won. Yep, I was cheating. 27-17, it was a, it was a, it was a Ryan Tannehill had a – Decent game. In Ryan that? Tannehill had a very good game, yep. actually. He threw for uh, over 300 yards, 333 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Completed 22 of 27 passes, 127.3 passer rating. Yes. Remember him having a great game, and I remember leaving there feeling like the team had a lot of momentum. Titans were 7-3 and three yes. leaving there. And then I remember it not going so well after that. Yeah. I thought on that day that the Titans were never going to lose another yeah. game. Like, this is it. This is where the streak just takes off. Seven and three mm-hmm. at that point. Yep. Traylon Burke's best game is yes. a Titan. Yes. Seven catches for 111 yards, including a 51-yard catch. Derrick Henry threw a touchdown pass to Jeff Swaim. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons had a sack. Sure. And they kind of did to Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers had – Basically, the exact same game that night for the Packers that he did last Sunday for the Jets. Two touchdown passes, 94.7 quarterback rating. Nothing great, but just very efficient. Yeah. But, boy, what all has changed since that night in Green Bay? Yeah, that was the start of uh, of an end of a rough season and kind of got us to where we are today with a new coach and kind of starting over with a new team. Um, but feel like we're on the right path. Just need to win a couple of games here and get some momentum. The Packers have a lot of familiar names that are that are still with the team. They've obviously added players over the course of the last two seasons, but 
They are just such a consistently built organization. Yeah, and they don't do it by spending a lot of money in free agency or being real aggressive when it comes to player acquisition. They they draft. They try to retain their own guys. Uh, they've got an approach that they believe in, and uh, and they stick to it. And um, you know, I was impressed by what they did this past week, winning in winning against the Colts without Jordan Love and. That is in large part because of the system that they have in place and the guys they have leading the way. Better on defense than what people know. They have a good offensive line. But the other thing, too, that they do with receivers that's so impressive is they find their receivers largely at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, yeah. It's really fascinating. So Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and – they find and, and you go back to the Jordy Nelsons and the Randall Cobbs and all of these other guys. So they find fits that are perfect. Jaden Reed, their slot receiver, was a guy that really impressed us at the senior bowl. And the the senior and he was drafted in the second round. So they find system fits, and because the system is so well established. They can have a second or third or fourth round receiver become a star. They don't have to draft the guy in the top ten. They can find a defensive lineman that would become a star for them because like the Steelers, like the Ravens, they have that system in place. They have the scouting staff in place. They keep the general managers in place. The head coach, I mean, their head coach has been there now for six years. Wow. Oh. Which is hard to believe that it Matt's is hard been to believe. there that It really long. is. Mm-hmm. It really is. And I think, you know, you're starting to see the team here do that, that a little bit as That's far as – That's the goal. As, yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I think, you know, that – look at the number of players here that were in the Senior Bowl last year and in some of the Senior Bowls in the past. And you want to get a system in place and stick with it. Um, no, that's what, you know – Chad Brinker, Rand Carthon, um, you know, Brian Callahan all want to do. And that's just a matter of getting consistency and, and just cycling guys in. And where does Chad Brinker come from? Green Bay, the epitome yep. of old school NFL. You know, they now have the NFL record for wins. They have overtaken the Bears. Oh. And they just last Sunday won their 800th game in the National Football do you get a cake or something for that? 800 games as a franchise? Well, That's a lot of wins. I would say to you, uh, not meaning to be facetious, normally in that situation you would probably give the owner a cake, but they have no single owner. So everybody gets cake. The community. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. cake the for commu- everybody. The community. Get cupcakes. Yeah, you give out cupcakes. <laughs> when you that, have to, uh, yeah. Yes. The community, in essence, owns the Green Bay Packers, which – It's so cool. Well – yeah, the the owners don't just love it in the league because since the Packers are public, you can you know you can buy the share of stock and all that, and then you go to the shareholders meeting which they have every year. They tell everyone what they got from the league dispersal. They tell everyone uh. all of these things. And so the owners are not phenomenally crazy about <laughs> that. When that information gets out from the Packers shareholders meeting, um, it's official yeah. because they've told their shareholders <laughs> what it is. The, the, the NFL is not a publicly traded company. <laughs> they don't really want to share that information. And yet the Packers – Yes. Have to share it with the group. Interesting. The things you never think about. Well, I think about that. Well, I'm <laughs> sure a lot of people think, a lot of people in Green Bay probably think about it too. But I never have. Do you know someone who owns a share of stock in the Packers? I don't know. I have I have a sister that lives in uh, in Milwaukee and her husband's a huge Packers fan, but I don't think they own a share of the Packers. I know a couple people who come. Okay. Can I ask a silly question? Sure. Do you get like a like a check in the mail? I don't think, or does it just kind of go I, back into the pot? I think it goes and back part into the pot. The I, I don't think there's a. There's not like a buyout. I don't think there's plan. a public dispersal. Interesting. So it just kind of goes back into the pot, but they are kind of in the know of like mm-hmm. 
financially what's and going on. And you get on. to go. You get to go here. The president, who's, I think, getting ready to cycle out, Mark Murphy, mm-hmm. they they have the, the annual gathering. And they I think they do it at Lambeau. I think they do it okay. in the stadium. It's like the State of the Union. That's what it is. That's very cool. Yes. It's just different. I like different. All right. Topic number two on the OTP pregame every Thursday. It posts at 8 o'clock Central Time. Jim White, pass catcher, that needs a breakout game to help Will Levis. Amy, you can answer this too if you'd like. I shall. You know, I think, you know, I, does Sunday kind of as a breakout game for Calvin Ridley? I mean, I guess it does. He I think two it does. Yeah. So, uh, because I think he's just scratching the surface on what that's going to be. I mean, I think more is coming from him. So, I think I would say DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, it, just because – he has been pretty much invisible the first couple of weeks. Part of that's because he's not hasn't been completely healthy. Another part of it's because they just haven't worked him in uh, from a snap standpoint. Um, you know, Brian Callahan talked earlier this week just about wanting to make him the primary re- receiver on some plays, which is going to lead to him getting the ball more. I think if you can start taking advantage of Hopkins and him winning one on ones, that opens things up for other people. So. I mean, so far it's been quiet for Hopkins. It's been quiet for Boyd. It's been quiet really for everybody except for Ridley's, you know, big catch uh, on Sunday. So, but I'll go Hopkins there. I think I think he needs to kind of get into a groove and turn into a a, a threat that other teams have to worry about. I say Traylon Burks. I think it is. It, I think for his own personal career it's time for him to show what we've all seen him do in practice it's time for that to translate into a game and for him to have a really big game I think it's obvious in watching them work together that Will Levis has a good rapport with Traylon Burks I think you're right and so I think that that is a well that he is going to go to every Sunday if given the opportunity because I think that there's a familiarity there now it's on Traylon to complete the play, to finish the job. Um, and so I think that if he can have a breakout game on Sunday, I think that if those two can get some traction under their wheels a little bit and really start to make something happen, I think that can be a really good thing for all people involved. And, yeah, and I think Traylon needs some good things to happen to him to build confidence. I mean, they've talked him up so much during the course of this offseason. I don't care whether it's the quarterback or the coordinator or the head coach or, or the GM. They've all set, bragged on him. But there comes a time where he has to start making some plays, I think, to to generate some confidence for himself. You'd love to see him come down with that ball on Sunday. I thought he had a better chance to – to catch it than the Jets defender, but he didn't come down with him. If he can make a play like that. Boy, you know, what could that have been for yeah, him, though? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Instead, it's a momentum play going the other way, and um, he, he, he has to take advantage of his opportunities when they come. All right. Topic number three. Packers player you are most worried about from a Titans perspective. I guess it depends on who the quarterback is. I mean, if it's Jordan Love, that's who I worry about uh, just because he'll give them a lot more on offense than I think what Malik Willis would be able to. And, uh, you know, Malik proved on Sunday that he can win a game. Uh, They did it by running the football and uh, by protecting him and him protecting the ball and him picking his spots. But if Love's back in there, that opens up the offense even more, and he'd be the guy I think would be a, a more, much more considerable threat. Do you have one? That was mine. I, 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 think, I think that anything else you can game plan for, the, the wild card of who's going to be back there is going to change up what they do schematically enough that there are reasons to worry about each individual quarterback being back there. So I think that is the, that's the ticket either way. Mine's Rashawn Gary. Really? Okay. That's a good one. He, is a, you know, he doesn't have double-digit sacks in a season yet. And this is year six out of Michigan. But he's a really good pass rusher. He's nearly 280 pounds, and so he's one of those outside linebacker, defensive end guys who's 
less linebacker and more defensive lineman. He's really good against the run, and he's he's a he's a good power pass rusher as well. I mean, he's due a double digit sack year. I mean, that's gonna happen. I mean, he's a really good player, and so that's going to happen for him at some point. Even and he has one right now through the first two games, but. Yeah, I, you know, the, the edge guys for the Titans, Latham was was much better. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Petit Frere did not have a good game. This kind of player is a tough player to go against, both against the run and the pass, because he's heavy. Uh, I know the Titans liked him coming out of Michigan. Yeah. Nobody was – those players are really hard to project. Because they they're not as twitchy as the six five two forty five two fifty guys, and sometimes you're saying, okay, does that guy eat his way further into the defensive line? Yeah. Does he become just a guy out there, or does he morph into this player who does both well? And you're like, yeah, we're really glad we drafted him. That's what happened with Kerry. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's mine. That was a good one, Mike. That's a good one, and and I know we didn't nom, name Josh Jacobs, but he. That's you know, that, that's, yeah. that's a good one too. Yeah, that's the, I, I, mm. The reason I didn't is I just I think the Titans' defense is going to be stout. I mean, especially the way Ernest Jones played. I don't care who the running back is. I think they're going to be good defensively, stopping the run all year. And uh, I don't think they'd have have the same success if they tried to take that approach against this defense as they did against the Colts. I agree. Hey, Titans fans, celebrate each Titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Kroger the very next day. Just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now, let's be clear. It's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. The OTP pregame continues, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Jim Wyatt, senior writer, editor, director, producer, Filmmaker, what all <laughs> other things? All Jim's a really busy yeah. man. It feels yeah. like you need to keep <laughs> going yeah. Yeah. when if you I, say I, senior well, writer, uh, editor, senior yeah. editor. Yeah. TennesseeTitans.com. It feels like he needs more. Yeah, it's like when people have a lot of letters mm-hmm. after their name. Remember like FDIC? MD, PhD, uh-huh. LMNOP. Yeah. But if yes. I'm doing all that other stuff, I need to raise around here. Yeah, I didn't realize I was doing You're all doing this on the side. Okay, topic number four for Jim Wyatt is this. Titans defensive player who has been the most pleasant surprise to you through two games. And that I, doesn't mean he's come out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean – Yeah, and I just – I wish I wouldn't have just said his name because Ernest Jones, watching him play on Sunday, um, and I, I watching him from afar against uh, – you know, for the Rams, I knew he was a good player, but coming in here and just seeing the attitude he plays with, the way he runs the football, how physical he is, knowing that was just a second game and he's playing every single snap, I think he qualifies as the mo- as the the biggest eye-opener to me. Landry's been very impactful, three sacks so far, and I think the corners have done a, a mostly solid job, but – I'm giving it to uh, Jones just because I think of what what's coming next, and we've only seen him one full game. Mine was Harold Landry. I knew that he would be back and he would be good, and he was coming off of a great end to 23, and so we were expecting good and consistent from him. He has been great, and I think that he exceeded even my expectations because he's usually a guy that really peaks towards the mid end of the season like he typically finishes strong given that he's healthy um so I I was kind of expecting that again and he I mean he has come out guns a blazing early in the season so what does that mean for the remainder of the year who knows is he just getting fired up who knows but I'm excited about him I'm excited watching him play and I've been pleasantly surprised about how consistent and how impactful he has been so early in the season. That's a great point. And, you know, he stayed hot from the end of last year. He was hot at the yeah. end of the season. It seemed like he was getting a sack every game in 
November, December, and the first part of January. And when you have those players get on those streaks, I mean, you, you love to see it. And he's just kept going. Yeah, he hasn't stopped. And I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about the big guys, and rightly so. I mean, we have some, some great defensive linemen and a lot of guys to talk about. But Harold Landry always kind of gets – Oh, yeah, and Harold's there, and he's yeah, good, too. I but, that. I mean, yep. Harold Landry is having a remarkable first couple of games. Well, I mean, he's on pace for – I mean, he's got three sacks through two games. I mean, you keep that pace going, you start talking about crazy stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, and he could do crazy stuff. That's right. Because he gets – he typically gets better as the season goes on. That's very fair. So, there you go. Okay, topic number five for Jim Wyatt, who's in the Snickers hot seat on this edition – of the OTP pregame in our new studio here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Isn't it cozy? It really is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cozy. you like this? It is very nice. Need yeah. a fireplace in here. Oh, We're getting one. Jim. Are you getting a fireplace Say in here? Less. We're getting that right. Okay. I'm be nice. Well, you know I'm buying one now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Former Titan that has a bigger impact on Sunday's game, or I guess you'd say the biggest impact. Malik Willis. Braden Narvison, Andre Dillard. Mm. Oh, man, that's a great question. I'll repeat it then. (laughs) (laughs) Former Titan who has the biggest impact on Sunday's game. Malik Willis, Braden Narvison, Andre Dillard. Ooh. Well, I guess, it, I mean, it depends on whether Malik plays. Obviously, if Malik's the starting quarterback, that's an easy answer. What's your guess? Yeah. My guess is he's going to play. I think so, too. Yeah. And they're going to play this game, you know, and, uh, you know, all the way until Adam Schefter or, or Tom Pelissero or Ian Rappaport tweet something out Saturday, Saturday night at 11 o'clock. Well, and the Thursday tweet from Schefter is already yes. out, and he's saying that his sources are saying it's 50-50. Yes. And I think, as you know, 11 p.m., those things seem to roll out 11 p.m. on Saturday night right after midnight Eastern. We'll probably get a more definitive word. But they're going to play this game all the way through. That's why I answered, you know, I, I watched the videos of Love in practice yesterday, and he did some movement. You know, it was obviously just individual, and and it wasn't um, it wasn't you know, team portion of practice. You know, if he plays, he's obviously going to make going to make a big impact this game. I just can't see it. I don't know why you would risk putting Love out there for the you know for week three and and risk potentially having something happen to him that would impact the season. So I my gut tells me it's going to be Malik. And uh, so Malik's going to have the biggest impact, whether that's good or bad. I mean, I th- the Titans know him. He knows the Titans. Um, I think the Titans will have a plan for him, but obviously Matt LaFleur knows what he's doing as well. He's going to have a plan to take advantage of Malik's strengths, and uh, they did that very well against the Colts. All right, so, Amy, I'm going to ask you the same question. Okay. Former Titan that has a bigger impact on Sunday's game, Malik Willis, Braden Narvison, Andre Dillard. Assuming Malik Willis. But don't say assuming. <laughs> just play. answer the question. <laughs> well, I don't want to pick the same thing as Jim again, so I'm going to say Braden Narvison. Okay. Because I think that. Now we're assuming he's still the kicker. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a trap. We're assuming he's still the kicker on Sunday, we're, which it, we feel like he will be, although Matt LaFleur did not give him the greatest vote of confidence. This is exhausting. I know. This is an exhausting game. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, but I uh, I think that assuming he is the kicker and he comes into town and plays, I think that he will probably be the person <laughs> scoring a lot of points for this team. I think that the Titans' defense's whole plan is to force them to be kicking at field goals as opposed to scoring touchdowns given the option. So, I mean, he'll probably be a big part of that. I think it's Narvison, too, because I think Malik starts. I think the real question is, can Jordan Love be the backup? Because if Jordan Love is able to be the backup, then they don't have to elevate Sean Clifford. They could, they would have the ability to elevate another player. And the Packers do have more guys banged up at this point than the Titans do. Um, you, you know, I, they even threw in the caveat, the source in the Adam Schefter piece, threw in the caveat that they would feel more optimistic toward Jordan Love being ready to play against Minnesota a week from Sunday against, sure they against would. the Titans. Yeah. So if it is Malik, 
Malik has shown they can that he can move the football. No problem with that at all. But they probably do kick at more field goals. Yep. And, that is my guess. And if that is the, the case, Narvison is six of eight on field goals at this point. He's missed a 46-yarder and a 45-yarder. Um, you know, that could prove to be a key in this because we know what his range is. We know he's talented. We saw him in the preseason. Absolutely. And, and, and I mean, he's a good kicker, but he's also a rookie. Yeah, but I, I'm mm. – and, and so does – you know, I said bigger impact. Well, for him, the bigger impact could be making the kicks. Or missing them. Or missing the kicks. And, you know, this is going to draw two – the side-by-side comparison between he and Nick Folk. Mm, yeah. Did you, you know, so you're going to – I mean, all of that's going to come up because I think this is going to be a game where you're going to see some kicks. That's just me. Not long after the Titans parted ways with Braden and he ended up being the Packers kicker, I've got a lot of people questioning, well, why would you not stick with him? You know, why? You know, he's got he, – he's a young guy you can develop. Sure, kickers are no – no sure thing. We all know oh. that. Mm-hmm. And, and this team has had, you know, after such a great run of having dependable kickers, that that ended a lot of what in a lot of ways after Ryan Suckup left. This team's been through a lot of kickers, and uh, so I, I've certainly thought it was the right decision to go with Folk. More of a sure thing, and he's been good. And hopefully, Narvison has a great career. I really like him. He's a oh, nice yeah, kid. He's, great. he's one of those guys that would st- you know go out of his way to say hello to you. But he was twenty-one to twenty-eight in camp. He uh, yeah, he hit the long field goal in the preseason, but he also missed some. Made the game-winning kick. Yes. in the Seattle game too. Yes, yep. So he's uh, he's a tough-minded kid, but um, I think Folk is what this team needs. Don't need don't need another issue to be raising its Nick head Folk at this is, point. Nick Folk is yeah. 31 of 32 yes. since he got here. Yeah. I mean, after Kicker Palooza in 2019. <laughs> oh, that makes it sound like it was fun. <laughs> it was not fun. <laughs> it was Kicker Palooza. Yeah, it yes. was Kicker Hell as well. I mean, <laughs> we I saw mean. Cairo Santos in week one, and he has righted his career. He has. Yeah, he, he has. has. But he was four of nine when he was here, and he was out of football for the rest of 2019 before the Bears brought him in in 2020. And he re- I mean, there were some good kickers who were part of the roster and got here and just, oh. Golly. And, I mean, Stephen Goskowski is going to call the game on national radio with Larry Kahn here on Sunday. His 2020 was – yeah, and, you know, kind of all over the road as well. It was just well. heating pads, so many heating yeah, pads. So, Holy <laughs> smokes. I've never t- seen anything like it. I'm scarred. But Kicker Palooza in 2019 was – that was crazy. Dude, Kicker Palooza sounds like fun. It sounds like there's rides and <laughs> there prizes. <was. laughs> there were, I mean, it was – Kicker disaster. I mean, there were rides. It was an, emo- an, an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, it was. was. I mean, the, the Titans were 8 of 18 on field goals. Yeah. Virtually every high school in Middle Tennessee <laughs> is better than 44% on field goals now. <laughs> I mean, it was just – it was crazy, it right? Was awful is what it was. And so yeah. you've got, you got a guy who's made 31 out of 32. Go with that guy. Well, I mean, uh, you're talking about analytics? Yeah. I mean, you're – yeah, I mean, you, Nick Folk's probably not going to kick a 60-yard field goal. And and at this point, I, you that's know, I'm fine. Not, I, well, I know, but you're. That's what I'm saying. You're going to try a lot more 40, 41 yarders than you are 60 yarders. I think Narvison might have been on the practice squad had he cleared. I think so. I think so. Had he cleared waivers. I agree with that. And if he ever becomes available at some point again, I wouldn't be surprised if he's back here. Right. Because you'd like to have a young guy that you're working with all the time, who's working with your snapper and your holder and your position coach and things of that sort. So I don't think that's a bad strategy at all. Some teams do the free agency thing. Some teams draft a guy and then say, you know, we're going to ride with this guy. Uh, Of course, you know, the San Francisco 49ers young kicker who's very talented had an extra point blocked in the Super Bowl that turned out to be a key play. Yep. I'm sticking with my guy. But here's the other thing that's wild with kickers. 
Kickers through the first two weeks of NFL play are 35 of 39 on kicks of 50 or over. Wow. They're, yeah. they're making 90% of kicks 50 or over. And of the four misses, Justin Tucker has two of them. That's a crazy smiling? stat. Because yeah. 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 he's say, pretty much automatic. He's I mean, been he's Mr. Automatic, automatic from yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a quite a stat. I mean, they're yeah. talking about him very legitimately as a potential Hall of Famer at some point. Yeah. So how ironic is that? I'm not saying it in a – say with a twinkle in your I'm eye. not saying it with a twinkle in my eye. I'm just saying that is really surprising. It is very surprising. That's but, yeah, true. these guys are putting – and they're putting them in the net. They're putting them in the net from 55 yards. Well, Jim, it's you, wild. you remember if a guy was making 67 to 75% of 40 yards, yeah. he was considered good. And now, I mean, they send those guys out there, they expect them to make – 75, 80%, in this case, 90% of 50 plus. Just like you and I can remember when a 42 yard punt was good, and the Titans have a guy right now whose career average is 53 plus. Yeah. <laughs> but think about how different the the training for kickers is oh, now. Yeah. I mean, kids start when they're eight in like serious yep. regimented kicking programs. I think the biggest difference is soccer. And yeah, I think and the kids prevalent play soccer the prevalence of the training and then how many kids are involved in soccer, I think has you know, as soccer has boomed in this country, that's where it's really come from. But st- I mean like the Titans punter has been practicing punting his whole life. And, and some l- of that is family. Yeah. And he's but. one of only like five guys who punt in the NFL who are not from Australia. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> yeah. That's the other new. part of yeah. this that's so int- – I mean, the Bears punter in week one was a 27-year-old rookie from Australia. Yep. Yeah. And there's more and more coming oh, all the time. Oh, it's crazy. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. (laughs) SeatGeek. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. It's time now for the key ingredients of the game delivered by Little Caesars. All right, Jim. Hang on. You have to hold the Okay, here we go. Pizza pizzas. All right, so I have to do this in under a minute. Yeah. Oh, look at this. That's the technique. You're That's ca- pretty good, Jim. You're kind of like doing it like the Shoney's Big Boy. I can't do it completely. Remember Big Boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do I can't do it, do it flat against the box. They got plates in my wrist. So I've got to do it. This is my technique here. Somebody take a picture fingers. of that. <laughs> Whoever plays quarterback for the Packers on Sunday at Nissan Stadium, they will be handing the ball to Josh Jacobs. Jacobs carried 32 times for 151 yards, and the Packers went over Indianapolis last weekend. They would love for him to get 30 plus touches again this week. Key number one, pretty obvious, slow down Josh Jacobs. Key number two, pretty straightforward as well. Take care of the ball. Titans are minus four in turnover ratio. Packers are plus four in the same department. Titans need to flip that script and win the turnover battle. The third key is also about the Tennessee offense. They must stay on the field. In their first two games, far too many three and outs. Titans offense needs to move the chains, extend drives, flip the field, and most obviously score points. Less three and outs are a key. That was definitely under a minute. Good job, Mike Keith. Thank you. Little Caesars is the official pizza partner of your Tennessee Titans. Look at Jim. Jim's doing the most right now. Download the Little Caesars app at the Little Ce- <laughs> Download kind of the app? Little Caesars <laughs> app, excuse me, and get your favorites delivered today. Delivery fees apply. And look right here. Pizza pizza. Good job, Mike. Okay. Jimmy. Jim, we have to conclude. Let's have the pizza okay, boxes there you back. Go. There Thank you, go. you. Here, here's your next prize. Okay. Oh, Lordy. Hold it high. Okay. Do you want me to do today's mayo tovation? I've got to read this. Okay, do it. A mayo tovation from Hellman's. Mayo Titans cheers be loud and your buffalo dip 
deviled eggs or potato salad make your mama and your entire family proud. Hellman's, the official mayo of the Tennessee Titans. Mayo game day be delicious. <laughs> Jim, you're doing so great. That was well done. That's, I'm so proud of you. It's really good. <laughs> this is awesome. Jim has places to be. Get you're fo- a great Vanna. You can follow. He really is. <laughs> Vanna's still going, too. Yeah, she is, sure and is. so is Jim White. Yep. Attaway, Vanna. Yep. Still love you. Get it, girl. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say now. I never thought I would mention Vanna on the OTP pregame, but well, I did. Here we are. It's Vanna first White. time for everything. We're big fans. For Jim Wyatt of TennesseeTitans.com, senior writer, editor, and for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for this edition of the OTP. Mm-hmm.